Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. The channel has now passed 15,000 subscribers. I'm still reading all the comments, but I have given up on replying to any of them. Um, I used to reply to some occasionally. Part of it is there are just too many coming in too fast. Literally why, I'm, if, why I was answering a question, another question would come in. Also, I've noticed that even when I've answered questions, people then ask the same question, sometimes in the same section. So what I decided to do was I gathered up a lot of questions that have been answered or have been asked multiple times, and I'm going to answer them here. This is going to be my first fact, my first frequently asked questions. I can't imagine there won't be others. Uh, I'm not going to call this fact one, but it probably is fact one. So let me start with saying this channel is for me to talk about game development stories of my own games. That's the only goal. That's the only purpose. There's no other agenda. I'm not trying to start a Kickstarter. I'm not making a new IP that I'm going to spring out later. I'm certainly not trying to reform Troika. Um, I love Leonard and Jason. Uh, I love them to death, but we did that. It's done. I, I don't want to run a game company again. Um, something that I've had to say repeatedly, because it, this is probably the most frequently asked question is, are you going to remaster Fallout or Bloodlines? I do not own any of the rights to Fallout, Arcanum, or Bloodlines. So I can't remaster those or make sequels to those or anything. If you're interested in Fallout, contact Bethesda. They own all the rights. If you want to know about Arcanum or Bloodlines, contact Activision. They own all the rights. Now, as a little side note, I do own the code to Arcanum and Temple. That was part of the contract. I can't release that code. That was also part of the contract. I... Just for funsies, I recompiled Arcanum recently. Modern compiler under modern windows. It generated a surprisingly large number of warnings. Eh, I suppose it should be that surprising. Especially since it was a C uh, code base that I was compiling on a C++ compiler. But it compiled and it runs. So I'm just throwing it out there as this code is recompilable. Most of my code in the, in the 90s and early 2000s was written to be operating system independent. I hid all the operating system calls in a library. Uh, it was called GNAW at, at, at Interplay for GNAW's not Windows. And it was called TIG at Troika for TIG isn't GNAW. Because, you know, backwards and forward acronyms are funny to me like that. Because of that, most of the work on getting these games running was just updating that one library. So it can be done. Um, I've said this multiple times in both videos and answering questions. I'm not an employee anywhere. I'm a contractor which means I'm self-employed and I'm not even a full-time contractor. But what I mean by that is I'm not working at Obsidian. I'm not an employee of Obsidian or Microsoft or anywhere else. Um, I am working on Outer Worlds 2 as a contractor, a design contractor. I'm not a director. I'm not involved in any of the big decisions or even the main decisions. So I am working on it. That's about all I can say. Um, there have been a lot of people asking me to play other people's or other companies' games or to rank them or to review them. I'm not going to do that. It's not the point of my channel. And there's also a lot of other channels doing that a lot better than I ever could. If you don't believe me, go watch Leonard and I playing Fallout um, at Obsidian a few years ago. It, you don't want to watch us stumble around in our, our old games. Um... See, I, I wrote all these questions down so I could answer them. Oh, I didn't work on Fallout New Vegas. In fact, I started at Obsidian a year after it shipped. A lot of people have asked me what my role was or what I did with it. I didn't work on it. I did, however, play it 
I played it multiple times. I've played all the DLCs. I have uh, joined. I finished it with joining Yes Men, with joining House. I did one playthrough where I was a cannibal and I ate all the leaders of all the factions and I got that that great perk you get for doing so. Although I imagine that Mr. House kind of was like old beef jerky. But yeah, that was a fun playthrough too. Um, I really, really love, I love and admire what that team did because not only did it feel really OG Fallout, but they did that in the same amount of time I did Temple. And I mean, Vegas rocks. If you haven't played it, play it. Um, I've had questions about things that I didn't witness. I've also had people I worked with email me and say, oh, by the way, this happened. So I want to make it clear. I'm not going to talk about any events that I didn't witness personally because I don't want to tell you what someone else was thinking or feeling or planning because I don't know. I, I'm, all I can tell you is these are things that I saw people do. And then you can draw whatever conclusions, although I, I implore you not to turn it into a dramatic retelling of heroes and villains, even though some of you are going to do that. Um, I'm not going to start doing regular interviews with other developers that I worked with. Yes, that one I did with Leonard was super fun, and I think I need to have him back because there's just too much stuff I don't remember or wasn't involved in on the projects we did. And I'll try to get Jason and a few others, but I'm not going to turn this into an interview channel. Again, that's not what I intended to do. This is more of, hey, I've done game development for 40 years. Maybe you can learn from some of my mistakes and <laughs> some of the stories I'm going to tell. Um, which leads me to why I am doing this. Um, 42 years is a long time to work in any field, much less game development. I have a lot of stories. They cover a lot of things. I'm not even, I haven't even scratched the surface of some big topics I want to touch. But if you're wondering why I'm doing it now and this way, I did try writing a book. It was over 500 pages. I had a few people read it. Apparently it's a bit of a downer. What I learned was I can write one of these stories and the feedback I get from people is, uh, it was confusing. It was disjointed. Uh, sometimes it felt mean spirited. Um, but then when I tell the story, people are like, oh, wow, that's really positive. I like, I like your take on it. I don't get that. Other than I think I've had to learn the lesson again that I'm not a good writer. Apparently I story tell better than I story write. So you're getting videos and no book. The book exists though, but you're not going to see it. The other reason I'm doing it is kind of personal. I am now 57 years, nine months old. That is the exact age my father was when he passed away. I was 24 when he passed. I, I was not encouraged by him in any way um, to do almost anything. My parents were divorced when I was young. My mom encouraged me to do a lot of things. But when my father passed away, I was in my second year of the PhD program. I had done two years of a master's at UCI, and then I was doing two years I was two years into PhD, which actually, since it technically you go there to get a PhD, I was in the fourth year of the PhD. I was questioning whether I wanted to do it. And when my father passed away, it kind of made me think, what do I want to do with my life? The one thing I ever did that made me super happy all the time was making video games. So I decided to do that. And everybody in my life, friends, family members, colleagues, Classmates were all like, your throat, you're wasting, you're wasting your life. Except my mom. She said, I figured you might always do something like that. And everyone came around. My thesis advisor, fellow um, graduate students who also came to work at the same company I did years later. They all came around and saw the game industry for what it was, which is a really exciting, fun place to work and difficult. So I wanted to do all that. And tell those stories. But the reason I'm doing it right now is because I was thinking, wow, this is when my dad passed away. I've got all these stories and they're just sitting around. I would like to get them documented somewhere. And it's hard to tell these stories because they're true stories. Like I said in the nuance video, 
These, this isn't stuff I'm making up. Um, it's really hard to tell these stories, though, because everybody remembers it differently. Uh, even though I've taken notes, I've had multiple people tell me, oh, no, that wasn't quite right. And usually the difference is something in nuance. For example, Leonard reminded me that the temple at the beginning of Fallout 2, we already had that as a level. It was where you went to go get the your grandparents' fault suit. But nothing I've said is really incorrect. It was a starting level. It was a, a, a level in the starting zone that you went to go get the suit. It was skippable. And I'm trying to remember how that worked. I think either you could, if you had a dialogue character, you could just say, give me the vault suit, and they gave it to you. If you were a stealth character, you could just sneak in and grab it. You only had to fight through if you were a combat character. So the level was kind of skippable anyway, and it was by no means a tutorial. It wasn't set up as being a tutorial. That was all mandated to us from... It was either the executive producer or marketing. Somebody mandated it. I tried to get rid of it. It didn't happen. So it was reformed into a tutorial level. So everything I said is true, but it's also what Leonard reminded me is true. We had that anyway, but it was by no means the form that shipped. Um, just yesterday, somebody wrote me, one of the programmers I worked with it at Interplay and said, hey, I remember you working on that random number generator for your GURP star system generator, not for, for Fallout specifically. And he's probably right. I just remember really focusing on like this random library in C is very bad and I'm not getting the numbers I want. So it's true. I just, my notes sometimes are written linearly, but the dates aren't linear. So I need to keep an eye on that. So what am I saying? With all these stories I'm telling and people trying to turn into heroes and villains, I'm just saying, remember that perspective changes everything. There are different people involved in these stories and they have a different perspective on them. My own perspective on some of these stories has changed over time. I look back on some of these things differently now that I'm in my 50s than when they happened to me in my 20s. And I've said this before, ironically, even though my color vision is fading, I see things in less in black and white anymore. And I very much urge you to do the same. So I hope I answered a lot of the frequently asked questions. And tomorrow I will resume telling stories.